Hi, I'm Pat Prokop. This is Heavenly Backyard Gardening and Astronomy. There's the scope right there. Last night, the sky was totally clear, crystal clear. The seeing was excellent. There was one problem. The moon was full, 100% full. It was the pink moon of April, and that gave off a lot of light. Still, nonetheless, I wanted to try out the telescope once again. I was getting a little itchy. We had several days of bad weather, and I was unavailable to get to the scope. But last night, I opened it up, and I went to capture one of my favorite galaxies, the Pinwheel Galaxy, up in the uh, Big Dipper, Ursa Major area. That's that direction. The moon was over there behind the trees when I started, but it was giving off a lot of light. Anyway, I was hoping to get maybe something. Let me show you what happened throughout the night. First of all, let's take a look at the settings. Uh, for the camera itself, I'm using the uh, Altair Capture program that came with the Altair 183C camera. And I have it set to RGB, uh, and the uh, size of the picture is pretty big. Um, uh, 5440 pixels by 3648 pixels, as you can see. And the uh, uh, exposure gain is at 35.13, that's out of 50 uh, is the gain level on this. And the uh, exposure time is right there at two minutes. So we got two minutes at 35. And I'm taking uh, this, I had it set for 36 and I took uh, eight more. So I had 44 two minute images that I took with this system. What about the, um, the guiding? The guiding was uh, pretty good last night. As a matter of fact, it was excellent. And uh, looking at the uh, guiding itself, um, moving along over here, there it is. Uh, as you can see, uh, and this is a very uh, tight scale. It's only from uh, uh, 0 to plus 3 to minus 3 on the root mean square. That's uh, seconds of arc of error. And it was less than a half a degree. So I was really happy about that. Uh, there you can see the uh, scale being stretched out to give you a better idea. So the guiding last night was just excellent. The good seeing I had um, and the, the guiding helped keep those stars nice and round. Meanwhile, I want to show you what I see when I'm looking at uh, one of the uh, images from the camera. This is basically all I see. Uh, can't see much at all. Now, if I stretch it out, I can see a little bit more. Uh, let me take a stretch here of the picture. So you can see a little bit more. You can barely see the spirals in there. You can see all the, the glitches on the uh, camera itself, too. The flats have a tendency to take that out, so that's good news. Uh, and my flats, uh, I, I took 20 flats, and it took all these little dust bunnies out. I tried my hardest to keep that camera lens clean, and uh, still, they show up. But taking flats, that helps a lot. But uh, let's take a look at what happened. Uh, trying to um, stack the images, I was a little afraid about this because I've been having problems with using the C11, the Celestron 11 inch telescope uh, in stacking. It just doesn't like to stack in these stacking programs very well. And, but this one, it did stack. This was only about five images right here. And there you can see the a bit of the, the spiral showing up uh, in the, uh, galaxy itself. Uh, that was after about five um, images and about after, oh, about 20 images, about 40 minutes worth, you can see a much better uh, view of the galaxy showing up as they keep stacking on the images. And uh, with that, I figured, okay, PixInsight will be able to definitely stack this. And so I set it up in PixInsight to stack it, and this is what I got. I had 44 images in the uh, PixInsight, and it took 34 though, so threw out 10. And this was the final stacking here. You don't see much here, so let's first of all uh, stretch it out to give you an idea what it's going to look like. If I stretch it out uh, from the color camera itself, you can't see much. A lot of interference because the, the color camera has two green cameras in it, two, two green, uh, green uh, uh, pixel um, uh, devices, uh, red, green, green, blue. Uh, is the uh, type on this uh, camera. So I can take that out by using PixInsight Background Extractor. And with that, you, you take sub subtraction here, and you let the subtraction go, and PixInsight does its thing. Takes out that blue, 
but it puts it back to unstretched values once it's finished. There you can see it once again. This is what it took out. It took all that blue out of the picture itself. There's the original picture. I don't need that anymore. But uh, looking at the picture, and then I'll stretch it. And there you can see that the galaxy is really beginning to show up nicely. Now remember, I had a full moon last night. And these are two minute exposures, 120 second exposures. So there was, even with the city light pollution suppressor, CLS filter on the camera, I was still getting a lot of background light, as you can see in the image itself. But with the processing through PixInsight, uh, I was able to uh, help darken that somewhat and bring out more of the galaxy itself, and there it is. And then from there, I took it over to Photoshop CC and did some more of its magic on that, and the final results looks pretty good, considering, once again, it was a full moon last night. Well, there you have it, Messier 101, the pinwheel galaxy on a night with a full moon. Does the CLS City Light Suppression Filter work? I think so. See you next time. Clear skies.